So I know what you're thinking, where's the focus? Um, that's kind of the point here. I want to talk about omnidirectional microphones and uh, the focus is right here on this omnidirectional microphone and the sound is also coming from this microphone. Uh, we're going to start, but remember the thing about focus because we're going to return to that. Um, we're going to start at the history, at the beginning of the history of omnidirectional microphones and the beginning of the history of condenser microphones because that's the same one and the same thing. Um, the first microphones were omnidirectional. That's a pressure uh, transducer. So it reacts to differences in, uh, in changes in pressure. Okay. Uh, the, the first microphones were, were kind of large. The diaphragm were quite large. Um, this is a tiny one. This is what we call a, a, a small diaphragm. And, and th those were fairly large, the, the early ones. Uh, and they had a they had an issue um, or a feature depending on how you look at it. Uh, they were because of the size and 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 other things. They were not truly omnidirectional. They were uh, omnidirectional in the low frequency response, but in the higher frequencies, they got more and more directive, which is like they had a focus. See, that's that word again. They had like a directional focus. In the high frequencies and it was also uh, it gave the response kind of a a boost like a treble boost which was uh, interesting enough not so not, not a bad thing necessarily they they had a, a response that would uh, kind of enhance clarity and 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 air and kind of the the important part of the the, the spoken voice okay and um, but anyway, the engineers wanted to improve on these early designs, so they came to the conclusion that we have to make the diaphragm smaller. So that's where we got these small, typical small diaphragm uh, condenser microphones with omnidirectional properties. Okay, so and that's great for a measurement microphone because if you make it, um, if it would be uh, like just a size of a needle point it would be truly omnidirectional in all directions uh, and it would be the perfect microphone for measuring things and measuring other microphones and stuff like that uh, because it wouldn't be directional in in high frequencies it would be it would have the same properties all of the frequency range so um, in the 50s something happened uh, they started using these condenser microphones, which were beautiful quality uh, for orchestral, reco orchestral recording and, and recording large ensembles. And they figured out that it would be good to have a bit of focus. There's that word again. Um, kind of um, like looking at what's in, the, in, the, in front of you, like zooming in on it, and, and, but still getting the whole the sound on the the concert hall or whatever the space getting all of that the spaciousness and then but still focusing on the instruments in front of the singer or the speaker whatever in front of the, the microphone so they come up came up with this idea and i have a little thing to to demonstrate that uh, they said we're going to put a sphere on the on the small condenser microphone and they did that just like this Okay, so what happens now? Well, now this microphone, which by the way wasn't flat in response to begin with, it also had a little bit of a treble boost and treble uh, focus uh, f forward. This now has a more of a, of a focus forward in, in this direction, you know. Um, and it, it's a nice, smooth response. But I can't help thinking that uh, wait a minute, we're actually back where we started because we, we, we began with a, with a larger diaphragm that had this focus already and this uh, rise in the frequency response. So this brings me to, to my new microphone. If you come with me over here, let's see if I can do this smoothly, right there. So 
This microphone has a typical large diaphragm. So I call this a large diaphragm omni microphone. It is a true omni transducer. It's, it's, it's a closed, it's a sealed capsule. It only has one diaphragm and all of that. And it's not maybe not as large as the really early ones, um, but it's still fairly large, like a typical, I would say, one inch uh, capsule. So this microphone, what does it have? It has a gradually increasing high frequency boost, which I like to think of as free EQ and very beautiful, I mean, wonderful sounding EQ. Um, I hope you can agree with that. And then it has focus. It has focus uh, to whatever is in, in front of it. So how well does this work, actually, this idea of going back and skipping the kind of the middle step? Well, surprisingly, well, I would say, I mean, looking at the, the measurements and, and listening it to myself, but this would really be up to you to decide if this is a useful microphone or not. Um, so I'm hoping to, to see this microphone in, in, in use all over the world soon. Um, we're going to make be making it in, in, in matched pairs or matched triplets, uh, which is like uh, three of the, of the same with the, uh, you know, super matched capsules in a, in a package. So you can do use it in a, in a decatry or, or a typical setup where you would use an omnidirectional microphone. Uh, and um, I mean, okay, there's a little bit more to this microphone than just the the thing I just I described about going back to the early designs and skipping the middle step. This is also it has some features I I don't think I've ever seen as far as I know. There's not a capsule like this anywhere, and it hasn't been made. So there's a kind of a a, a few special things about this microphone as well. And hopefully it all end, ends up with a with a beautiful sounding microphone. And um, I have to warn you though, this is not a microphone for everybody. This is like a, a very uh, unique and, and and special. And you can you might call it a, like a signature microphone. I put my name on it, which I I thought was a really cool idea. Um, so thank you for that. It was not mine, um, but it I think it looks it looks cool. Um, and I'm I'm proud to, to to put my name on this microphone because I think it, it it's uh, it kind of represents what I'm thinking, going back to the roots, and then taking another path, and hopefully arriving at something new, something beautiful, uh, but something that pays a lot of respect to the history and the kind of the past of the microphones, and also what people realize that they really want, they don't want. A truly omnidirectional microphone for, for for music recording. They want something with a little bit of focus. They want something with a with a treble boost like this shelf. Um, so there you have it. I call it the NU314K, and I think we've kind of come full circle with this one. Thanks for listening.